good morning. It is Wednesday. Um, I'm currently on my way to a customer who I was at in the beginning of the heating season. She has a furnace. Uh, she had no heat. And I went down there. The switch was off, but it's a new install. They installed a Ream uh, standard efficient 80% furnace with a Ream evaporator coil on top going to a ream condenser outside. They didn't finish piping in the condensate drain, and they also didn't, uh, or they did a really bad job with the return filter. So I have a filter cabinet, a 16 by 20 carrier, I believe, filter cabinet, and I'm gonna mount that on one side. And they cut out the jacket on both sides of the unit, so I'm gonna close up the other side and I guess we'll see what else we need to do. Okay, so here's our unit. Here's our current return filter grill with no real plenum. And they also cut out this side and threw a filter on there. And we're gonna seal this side up and We'll put the filter cabinet right here and do our best to make that as neat as possible. You can see they didn't finish the condensate. So we'll put a condensate pump somewhere in this area, plug it into this outlet, and we have some copper line here we can run the condensate pump into to discharge. Even some PVC here for us. And we'll label the gas valve, we'll label the unit, put a sticker on, and make everything look nice. Okay, so we got this all pulled off. I um, think I'm going to try to reuse this if I can to connect it. But you could really see how much care they put into this with these cuts. I'm going to cut that out nicely to fit this a little bit better. It's our 16 by 20 filter. And hook it up. Okay, so I did my best straightening out the top and the bottom and the sides, trying to take the edges off, but the sides I can't cut more off of because I need that to mount it. But there's no crazy sharp points coming out that are going to catch on the filter. So I'm going to get this filter together with the takeoff and we'll mount that. So I got this in nice and secure, I'm going to seal it with some mastic tape, and I'm going to make some nice bends on this tubing. I think I'm going to mount the pump around here, and i got to connect this piece up to here which fits perfectly. Make sure it's all nice and sealed so it's quiet. Got the edges taped up so it's as quiet as possible. Top one I taped up here, just for simplicity and now I'll get this on I'll tape that nicely straighten it out and Peter's cutting the piece of metal that we'll need to cover this up we're gonna make this look nice and neat as neat as we can tape it up and see what else needs to be done from there so our filter cabinet's in, I got all the corners nice and taped, we can still get the filter in and out, and filter's in. I'm going to make some nice bends on this piping for the condensate discharge, and here is that hole, which is now neatly taped up by Peter. And I think I'm just going to let the condensate pump sit right up here rather than drill it into the side because sometimes it's a pain when they're drilled on this side and the heat exchanger is also right here and I don't want to risk punching into the heat exchanger and making a hole in it. So I'm going to go ahead and start going with that. Okay, so here is our discharge tubing from the pump. And for the condensate drain, I made sure that we had a very good angle uh, so that the water flows. But 
We don't need to trap because it's on top of the furnace, so it's positive pressure. It's not sucking from here. It's pushing through there. So there will be no resistance for the water. It'll just flow into the pump. Peter's getting water now, so we can fill this pump up. We'll test it and make sure that this discharges to outside. I know where this goes out to. Um, and I made sure that this did go outside before even planning this with the customer. And then... I think we'll be good to run it for cooling and check our pressures, make sure we're operating okay. Um, this system has not operated yet in cooling. Hopefully there is a charge. And if not, we'll have to vacuum and charge it up. But I'd imagine that there is a charge in it. I guess we'll find out. So I just went to the disconnect and the unit outside, and we do in fact have refrigerant, but I do need to replace the disconnect. It's missing the actual, <coughs> excuse me, it's missing the actual disconnect itself. <coughs> I just turned the breaker off, coming back with the disconnect itself. A box and I'm gonna install that. Here's that disconnect. Here's our pressures right now. So it's good we have pressure in the system, but once I plug this in or get the new disconnect in and get it running, we'll see how it's cooling. Okay, we got it nice and level. Here is our power coming in. So that's gonna go to the line side. So no like arcing happens. Make sure that's in all the way. And make that nice and tight. And on grounds. There's two grounds here. I'm not sure why, but connect those both. them together like he had it. Whoever installed this the first time. Whoever didn't finish installing it. And this is the ground coming in from the Condenser. I hate stranded wire. Nice and tight, and then. These last two wires will go on the load side, which is the side that is off when the disconnect's pulled. And I'll match the colors. Not that it really matters, but it looks better that way.
okay and I think I'm gonna get two screws to secure it here as well but oh no forgot these time to restart we could cut the video so I got my um, locking nuts back in and pop that cover on Peter's gonna flip the breaker back on I'm gonna plug in the disconnect make sure nothing bad happens and we'll turn it on in cooling got power our disconnects in I'm gonna make sure it's 240 and Peter's gonna turn the thermostat on and we'll see what happens our contactor did pull in but you can see they also forgot to do the um, locking nut so I'm gonna put that in and rewire it I have the disconnect pulled and there's no voltage we got our disconnect in we got the unit started up got that fixed and now we're gonna watch the pressures and see what happens so you can see our pressures are very very odd the vapor saturation temperature is 12.6 degrees but we have proper subcooling for our unit and we don't know who installed this and what they did when they installed it I'm thinking that either there's contamination in the unit uh, like it wasn't vacuumed down well enough or maybe something's plugging up the TXV maybe the TXV is bad they did breeze um, but it's just very very odd at, at this point the customer just wants to leave the unit uh, as is and see what happens um, technically it is cooling and we can't force the customer to do anything else but I'm going to talk to Mike about it and see what he thinks I'm curious what you think but super super weird I don't know if this is going to make it to its own video or if I'll add this to another video but me and Peter are currently a job the whole job is duckboard and the house was recently flooded so all the duckboard got soaked it stinks uh, needs to be replaced um, we have duck work already it's in the van but right now we're just taking all this duck work down and I'm gonna try to do a time-lapse video of it so we'll see how that goes So we finished up taking all the garbage out. Here's all that duck work. And I swept up. Peter's vacuuming up the bigger debris. And we brought our duck work down. Now I just need to cut this line set out with the sawzall. We are installing a Bosch here. And oh, looks like we forgot a duck. And we gotta get the return out. Okay. So, all of our ductwork is out from the ceiling, nice and open. The new ductwork is all here. Got our, um, our drives, the slips are on the ducts. Um, they're all sealed, they're just brand new made going onto that Bosch. Got all of our flexes here, seven inch 
our takeoffs, our adapters, um, everything. So when it comes to the day we do this, we're all ready. Now we have to go back to the shop with all of our um, duck garbage. Get it into contractor bags and leave it at the curb and I'm on my way to a Wal McLean service call. The, the call is the boiler is hot to the touch so we'll see what that is. You can see we filled my truck completely to the brim. Filled my G's truck too. The duckboard is so disgusting. Got the truck all emptied out and cleaned out, restocked a couple things, and got all the garbage in bags except for the giant box of duck work. Just gonna clean up the garbage from in here. So we finished cleaning everything up, uh, blew out all the insulation with the leaf blower, blew ourselves off, and blew the inside of the cab out. Now we're on our way to the Deer Park call where the boiler is hot to the touch and I'm gonna see if I can get a TXV for that customer so that we can swap out that TXV, pump down the system, add new refrigerant and all should be good to go with her. The system is really big so we're also gonna have to get a uh, another filter girl for the other side so it's easier for her to change her filters. And it'll let more air flow through having that thicker filter than having the thin filter. Hopefully it'll quiet down the noise because it's really noisy. Um, but hopefully I get good footage for this next call. Completely forgot to record footage on that. The, me and the customer were really just spending the whole time talking. Uh, the Y McLean Ultra U control is no good. And the cover on the heat exchanger, the cover plate, was loose. The bolts were finger tight. I think that's why the system was so hot. But it's always running, so that's an issue, and that's the U-Control. And he may have thermostat issues. We're going to start with the U-Control. He may even install it himself. In we may mile, even just install a, a brand new boiler for him. Because it's not piped in properly, and it's 12 years old. Uh, we'll see what happens, but he was a pretty cool guy. Um, but then, yeah, that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video, like it. If you have any criticisms, comment, um, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.